today's video, we're going to take a look at this new Pentec TR45 Lite, a little five band uh, CW transceiver from WA3 RNC. Now, this is from the same gentleman that brought you the two band TR25 CW transceiver and the TR35 four band uh, five watt CW transceivers that are very popular amongst folks that do uh, POTA and SOTA and other portable operating. This is the five band five watt. TR45 Lite that is just starting to hit production now. At the time of producing this video, about the second week of December or so, uh, the pilot run uh, for these is just about finishing up and he's planning on entering in production uh, you know, the beginning of uh, 2023. The plan is to offer both uh, factory wired and aligned units as well as kits in the future. So let's take a closer look at the TR45 Lite. Now even though this uh, TR45 is considerably larger than the TR25 and 35 kits, um, you know, maybe not as uh, backpack friendly, I just love the look of this thing. Uh, from the vintage panel meter to the well laid out controls, uh, the physical form factor, built in speaker and carry handle, I think it's just an awesome looking little radio. The five bands covered by this rig are the 80, 75 meter band, the 40, 30, 20 and 17 meter bands. While full band coverage is provided in the radio, uh, the transmitter is optimized just for the CW portions of the bands. The unit I have here has two options. One is a built-in 5200 milliamp hour battery, which lasts quite a long time. And the other is a built-in Z-Match tuner right on the back of the rig that features both uh, coaxial and banana jack connections. So you can switch between your balance line and your coax and using the tuner in line or not. The design is a single conversion analog transceiver with a 4.9 MHz IF. It has a really nice sound with the built-in speaker. Uh, some of the new SDR radios and things like that uh, just sound to me very mechanical. This has a very nice warm sound. And we'll go play with it and take a look at some of the controls. Now other than the aesthetics of this radio, one of the other things I really like about it is that there's absolutely no menus whatsoever. Everything is controlled by knobs and switches. So let's walk through the various controls. Of course, there's a dial illuminator uh, that can be very bright, which kind of washes out on the video. So we'll go to the dim setting here for the video. The phones jack allows you to plug in uh, headphones. Uh, and the speaker is actually still active when you plug the headphones in. There's actually a separate switch here to turn the external speaker, or the internal speaker on or off. Now the volume control, uh, obviously right here. There's a variable notch control that uh, when you turn it all the way fully clockwise, essentially moves the notch out of the pass band so it's not there. And to simply use the notch, just rotate it down to uh, eliminate that interfering tone that you want. When you don't want to use it, just turn it fully clockwise again. There's continuously variable RF gain. The automatic built-in key or speed is right on the front panel. As you rotate it, you'll see on the display, you can actually change your key or speed. I typically run mine, oh, about 14 or 15 words a minute, maybe a little bit more. I'm not a speed demon. <laughs> I start to struggle when I get above uh, 20 words a minute. It's actually separate inputs for a set of uh, paddles or a straight key. And this is really handy if you actually have both. You don't have to go into a menu to switch between the two. You simply can uh, plug in what you want. You can actually plug in both at the same time. It's also handy when we go to tune up the radio that if you like using paddles, you can actually move the paddles to the key jack and then hit one of the paddles to act like a single key to hold the, tr the unit in transmit while you are uh, setting up the tuner. Very handy. The tuning encoder is right here. Um, as you, the, the default to tune is in the uh, 10 hertz position. Uh, if you hit, hit it once, it'll move to the 100 hertz position to tune. If you push and hold, it'll jump to the 1 kilohertz position to tune very quickly. Push and hold again and it drops to the one hertz position if you actually want to do very, very fine tuning. Here's your continuously variable transmit power control. We'll typically use this if you want to operate you know, lower than the five watt maximum, or if you want your tuning up, you'll, you'll tune up generally to lower power, then start increasing it as you get the uh, tuner kind of lined in. We'll actually show you the tuning process here in a little bit. And of course, when transmitting, uh, the S meter or the uh, analog meter can show either forward power or reverse power. 
We'll typically leave it in reverse power when we're setting up the tuner. And I typically leave it there anyway just to ensure that uh, something doesn't happen to the antenna. I can actually see what's happening. And there's also a high SWR warning light. Once the re reflected power gets too high, that will light up, give you an indication that you might have to either check your antenna or readjust the tuner. Now, a couple of the switches actually are a momentary push button one way or the other with a center off position. Uh, this one here will activate a dial lock when you toggle it up so that you won't uh, accidentally change frequencies. Hit it again and turns that dial lock off. Pushing that same button down will go to a battery check so you can actually check the health of the battery on the meter. And there's also a spot so you can actually hear your side tone so that you can kind of compare that to what you're listening to to see if you're tuned to the station properly or if you've got them zero beaded. The switch up here, when you push it up, is a uh, receive incremental tuning that allows you to adjust your receive frequency without changing your transmit frequency. So if someone is drifting off, or if you've got a tone you like to listen to that's different than uh, the side tone that's built into the radio, you can actually adjust that here. The RIT light lights up when the RIT is active. Push it up again, deactivates the RIT. The display obviously shows you the frequency you're operating on, shows you the band you're operating on, shows you the receive mode. There's actually three receive modes. There's CW narrow, which is what we're listening to now. CW wide is a wider filter position. And if you push and hold the RX mode switch down, it switches to SSB. It's still the same width, but it changes the, uh, essentially the zero beat frequency, if you will, adjust the internal LOs so that the dial frequency matches what you'd have on a normal, ordinary transceiver to listen to a single sideband signal. When you're in CW mode, there's, there's a, a zero beat offset so that you can actually hear the side tone. The USB display here just tells you that the CW mode is using the upper sideband. And by convention, you know, for 20 meters on up, the upper sideband is used for receive and then for the lower bands, the lower sideband is used. There are two VFOs. You can see the display is showing VFO A. This switch here, when you push it down, will switch between VFO A, which I've got set to CW here on 20 meters, and VFO B, which I've got in the single sideband phone portion of the band. Hitting it again brings you back to VFO A. Band selection is done with this switch as well, just by toggling the switch up. We can switch between and now the 20 meter band, the 17 meter band, the 80 meter band, 40 meters, 30 meters, and back to 20. So you simply cycle through all five with up pushes on this switch. Now let's listen to a couple of the uh, receive modes here. So here's the CW wide. We can hear a couple of different stations. We switch to CW narrow. Now I really just hear that one station. And there's also a, a narrow audio filter that you can apply after the IF which actually makes it even uh, quieter still. It makes it almost sound like a, a code practice oscillator. I was curious about the, how wide those filters are, so I took the time to go take a look at them on my scope. So this is a plot of the CW wide and single sideband uh, filter characteristic. You know, certainly not... Um, hi-fi quality, but uh, uh, very, very good for single sideband or listening wide for CW. You know, probably five or 600 hertz to 2300 hertz or so uh, in terms of receive bandwidth in the wide mode. In the CW narrow mode, uh, we're down to probably just about uh, 400 hertz of bandwidth centered on about 700 hertz uh, where the side tone is. You can ignore these little spikes. These were noise spikes being, being picked up by poor grounding of the probe I was using to actually go take a look at it. When you're in the CW narrow mode, you can engage the uh, low pass or the band pass audio filter, which sharpens up that filter even more right on the side tone frequency. And again, if you're properly zero beaded, it almost makes it sound like a code practice oscillator. So in addition to the long press on the receive mode to switch between CW and single sideband for the uh, local oscillator offsets. There's also a function in the VFO A and B when you long press that. Uh, when you long press that, what it will do is take 
the mode and frequency and all that you've got set up for that particular band and store that in non-volatile memory so that next time you power on the rig uh, and you switch to that band that's uh, the band and mode that it will go to so for example if I wanted to always be at 14.059 when I come to 20 meters I would push and hold this down and then the backlight goes out on the display. That tells you that you've now written that uh, into the non-volatile memory. So if I turn the rig off and then turn it back on again, when I return back to the 20 meter band, or in this case it'll be in the 20 meter band, it comes back to uh, that particular setting. So if I tune off frequency, turn it off, and then come back on again, we'll see that I'll return back to that 14.059 where I, that I wrote into the memory. Now the back panel is uh, quite simple. Uh, again, I've got the optional Z-Match tuner. Uh, this would not be there if you don't get that option. Uh, with that tuner in place, you can actually bypass it to go directly out to the antenna connections, or uh, in will allow you to use the tuner in line. And then the RF signal can be routed to the coaxial connector or the balanced line connectors. So in addition to the phones jack on the front panel, this jack here is for an external speaker. If the uh, nice internal speaker is not what you want, you can uh, plug in your external speaker here. Plugging that in will cut off uh, the internal speaker. There are two DC inputs. Now, pardon these amateur labels here. I put these on. These did not come uh, on the radio itself. Uh, the red one is for the charger only to charge the internal battery. So if you don't have the internal battery, that uh, really wouldn't even be there, I don't think. I'm not sure if it gets populated or not if you don't get that option. Uh, and if you want to use an external battery, even if you've got the built the uh, optional one inside, you can bring an external 12 volts into this coaxial jack here and run on an external 12 volt source. Let's take a look at how to use the optional built-in tuner. Z-Match tuner is very nice because it's just two controls and there's one combination that gives you the lowest possible reflected power. So you start off by plugging your key or your paddles into the key jack so that you can uh, key down uh, continuously. Uh, reduce the transmit power to some low level to start off with here. Turn the volume up a little bit and switch. I usually like to start off by switching to the wide mode so I can listen to the noise floor. And what you want to do is adjust the two knobs in the back. You can reach over the top and adjust for the maximum noise level or the maximum received level. So I'm going to bring the RF gain all the way up and just adjust these back and forth for the maximum noise. Feels like it's right about there. Now it sounds like I'm in a quiet portion of the band, so uh, we'll just listen a little bit to be sure I'm not going to interfere with anybody before I start keying up to test the transmitter. Okay, so satisfied that the band is, I'm not going to interfere with somebody. We'll start off by just turn the volume down here on the receiver, just a little bit. Leave the uh, RF power switch in the reverse position and uh, key up the rig and turn up the power. I can see I'm getting some deflection, some reflected power. So once I start to get some reflected power, then I can key down and start adjusting the knobs to minimize that. All right, so I looks like I hit a nice minimum spot there. Once I do that, I can then turn the power up some more. I'm getting more reflected power. Let's see if we can minimize that again. Went the wrong way. There we go. There we dropped it right down to zero. And then we can turn the power up some more. Now with the power all the way up, I'm not getting that much reflected power, so I'm just about there. And there, boom. Now I've got this thing dialed in, so I've got no reflected power. I'm properly tuned up, ready to roll at full power. Now the only control we didn't talk about is this guy right here. These are the controls for the CW message memory. Uh, there are two uh, message memories to store an outgoing message, like a CQ call, for example. Uh, and you can choose which one you want to play by either hitting the DIT or the DA key. If I switch this over to play, we can see hitting the DIT will play back message one, the DA will play back message two. If we hit the DIT, you'll hear my CW POTA call that I've got stored. Uh, similarly, if I want to record message one or two, I flip over to record. And what I would do is hit the DIT to record into message one, hit the DA to record in message two. The radio will repeat 
one or two in Morse code, once it finishes sending that, then you send your message. And then once you pause for a few seconds, that will get stored and your memory is there. Well, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this review of this uh, Pentec TR45 Lite. Uh, just a really great transceiver to operate. Such a great sound in it. Uh, even with the narrow, really narrow filter, it al the receiver almost sounds like a code practice oscillator. No ringing like you have with some of the DSP filters and some of the more modern kind of di digital designs or SDR designs. So just a great transceiver. And just a reminder, uh, at the time I, again, producing this video, uh, the second week of December 2022, uh, he's just finishing up the pilot production run uh, of these units. I pre-ordered this in September and just got it about two or three weeks ago. So uh, you may have to be patient <laughs> if you want one of these. It expects to be in production uh, in early 2023 and then to provide kits uh, for them as well uh, after that. I can tell you that once I got this unit here, I haven't turned on any of my, uh, my main uh, rigs here in the shack. I've been making all my contacts on 5 watts with this TR45 Lite. It's just such a fun radio to operate, very easy with all the manual controls, such a great sound to it. So again, I hope you enjoyed this review of the Pentec TR45 Lite 5-band, five 5-watt five CW only transceiver. If you like the video, Give me a thumbs up. And thanks again as always for watching. We'll see you next time.